fungal acne or do you have bacterial acne? Do you know the difference? Today, I'm going to be discussing the five signs that will tell you whether or not you might be struggling with a fungal acne issue instead of a bacterial acne issue, and I'll be sharing seven action steps you can take today to start to heal fungal acne. I'm Jill Therese, and after 15 years of acne struggles, I finally cleared my skin naturally, and I created my acne clearing program, The Clear Code, to help you do the same. Six and a half years and thousands of clients later, I made it my life's work to get you clear skin without pills, creams, and or crazy hormones. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video. Is it regular acne or fungal acne? How can you tell? So here's the thing. Our skin is covered in organisms all the time. Now, I know you just like shivered a little bit, but stick with me. One of the most common types of bacteria that sits on our skin all the time is called P. acnes, and it's most commonly treated by using antibiotics, things like minocycline, tetracycline, doxycycline, things I know I took for my acne, and they're designed to kill off the bacteria. That being said, I would imagine that if you're watching this, you've tried using those things either topically or orally, and you're still struggling with a lot of bumps and or texture issues and or issues on your skin that just can't seem to be figured out, right? Here's why. Among the many things that can be causing acne and or bumps on your skin is a yeast called Malassezia folliculitis. It's a tricky little bugger and there are 14 species. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, mm -hmm, 14. And so it can be kind of difficult to number one, identify and number two, treat. Question for you, have you ever taken an antibiotic for a UTI, for example, or an ear infection or strep throat? Have you taken a, an antibiotic over the past six months, six to 12 months in any way, shape or form? Type yes in the comments below because that relates back to what we're talking about. Here's why this matters. Broad spectrum antibiotics, again, doxycycline, for example, can kill a lot of the good bacteria in our bodies and support the overgrowth of bad bacterial fungus yeast, things like Candida, for example, and Malassezia. Both Candida and Malassezia grow much faster when other bacteria in the body isn't present. So less bacteria in the area, either your skin, your body, anywhere, means more food for things like Malassezia. So basically, the more you kill off even bad bacteria, so bad bacteria, good bacteria, or beneficial versus opportunistic bacteria, the more, the less that bacteria is going to eat foods that yeasts also eat. So basically, there's a higher presence of food and or things for Malassezia to feed off of. I know it's gross. I know. That being said, Malassezia is a really picky eater and it needs really specific conditions to thrive. But once it finds those, it can grow really quickly. And a lot of dermatologists and doctors don't always recognize it as a real issue. So they'll simply throw an antibiotic at you, they'll kill all the bacteria, which will mean more food for the yeast, and then a month later you're breaking out even more and more. And you're like, what the? Malassezia yeast is lipophilic, which means it needs a certain type of oil to thrive and in its diet. It's a long chain fatty acid oil, so 11 to 24 carbon unions, carbon units. And here's why this can be problematic. So many of our products that we're using daily have some type of fatty acid in them that can feed the yeast. So the internet goes into great depth about all of the technicalities and the chemicals and all the things here. And I don't think that's really what you want. I think you want to know, do you have malassezia and over P. acnes? And uh, what do you do about it, right? So let's talk about it. How can you figure out if you're struggling with malassezia, a yeast issue, over a bacterial issue on your skin? And then what can you do about it? Here are five ways to tell you might be struggling with malassezia over bacteria. So a yeast over bacteria. The first sign that this might be malassezia is that your breakouts, your bumps, will look kind of similar. The bumps on your face caused by malassezia are termed monomorphic because all of the pustules are going to look the same. Now, this does not mean, however, that you are also not struggling with a bacterial issue. I know you just groaned and you're like, Jill, say it ain't so, but here's why. Acne and yeast get into the pores, into these 
pores of our skin where also a hair, hair follicle exists, along with 10,000 gajillion other different things, right? So a lot of times what happens is doctors, for example, will see bacterial acne on the face. It'll present normally. They'll prescribe a topical antibiotic and then maybe an oral antibiotic. And then that gets rid of that specific type of issue on your skin. But unfortunately, it leaves more food around for the malassezia to grow and feed. And you're left wondering what the frick, like that bacterial treatment didn't work at all. And I still have all these bumps on my face. So if you've been treated with a bacterial topical or bacterial, if you've taken oral antibiotics and your acne's changed and now maybe it looks almost like very similar. Again, a lot of the bumps look really similar to each other. That would lead, that could maybe be a sign that you're struggling with some yeast issues. So don't think that if your acne looks all different all over your face that you aren't struggling with yeast. But if you do have very kind of uniform bumps, for example, across your forehead, which I know I had, that could be a sign that you're struggling with some yeast. The second sign that this could be malassezia is that these type of breakouts are generally concentrated near your hairline and or higher in the hair follicle areas like your jawline, for example, and or your neck, back, and chest. I usually see malassezia presenting here and here often. That's kind of what I see the most of. The third sign that this could be malassezia is that your skin itches. This is such an important characteristic to note. If you have bumps and or issues along your jawline and they itch, ding, 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 okay? Yeast is really itchy. If you've ever had a yeast infection down there, you know what I'm saying? It's not good. So think about it on your face, right? Imagine it's itchy. Ding, 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 alarms. That could definitely be a yeast issue. Also, if you haven't been using a makeup, right, or you, let's say you wash your face at night, your face feels good and it doesn't itch, and then in the morning you put on makeup and it itches like crazy, that is like a surefire sign that you could be struggling with some yeast. The fourth sign that this could be malassezia is if you're on antibiotics for your acne for a while and you're seeing a lot of bumps pop up here and there, you're more prone to yeast overgrowth when specific bacteria isn't present. So if you've taken antibiotics, if you've used bacterial topicals and you've seen almost an increase in the amount of bumps, redness, texture, breakouts, that also could be a sign. The fifth sign that this could be malassezia is if the acne goes all the way down your back. A lot of the normal P. acnes bacteria will stick up here and it won't go all the way down. If you have bumps issues that go down, like maybe the front of your, your stomach and or your back all the way down towards like your butt, that could also be a sign that it's malassezia. So if you think you're struggling with malassezia based on what we just talked about, and I'm sure the thousands of hours of internet research you've also done in addition to this video, what can you do? I'm not a dermatologist. You always have to chat with them, but there are a bunch of things you can do from an inside healing perspective and then also an outside healing perspective. So let's go over some action steps to start to target yeast issues. Keep in mind, there are 14 different types of malassezia, which we just talked about. They all have different optimal environments for growth, different optimal food sources. They're all very different. So the treatment for malassezia can be a little touch and go, but it's not hopeless by any means, okay? Step number one is to start on some quality probiotics. Probiotics are supplements full of healthy, beneficial bacteria for your gut flora, and they will help kind of tip the scales back to where you want your gut flora to be. We have an entire video about probiotics and acne. You can check it above my head somewhere and check it out there and learn more about probiotics, probiotics but those are like, my favorite acne clearing supplement in the whole wide world. Start eating more probiotic rich foods. Things like kombucha, kimchi, sauerkraut, yogurt, for example. Now, quick caveat. If you struggle with candida issues, so you're prone to yeast infections, avoid kombucha because they can be kind of linked in a way that you don't want. But if you don't struggle with that and you want extra digestion support and you need more live cultures in your food, those are some food options to try. Another option you can try is to ask your doctor for a prescription of fluconazole. So fluconazole is used to treat a variety of fungal infections. You take it orally and again, it comes from a dermatologist or it comes from a normal doctor, gynecologist usually, and it can be really beneficial if you're struggling with any type of yeast overgrowth. 
From an outside in perspective, here are some action steps you can take. Now, I know the first one's gonna make you cry, but we'll get through it. I would recommend you avoid using all of your current products for about 30 days or so. I know you just screamed, but here's why. Most of the skincare products that you are using right now are full of long chain fatty acids and you can do as much as you can possibly humanly do to kill the yeast, but if you're continually feeding it with long chain fatty acids found in your products, you're gonna be on this like horrible cycle of just feeding the yeast over and over again, you're not gonna be happy. If you have to use a makeup, Bare Minerals brand is a good one. Again, I don't have affiliation with makeup or skincare. I just really like that brand and it's easy and I would recommend using like a powder of sorts, but not using any type of foundation. And you might have to kind of hold off on a lot of your current creams because they are most likely causing some problems. A quick caveat here, a few oils, squalene oil, MCT oil, and mineral oil won't feed the yeast. So if you need to use those, those are okay. A second option is to explore using ketocosanol topically and or orally. As you can see by this word, it's very similar to its sister antifungal, fluconazole, and it's an antifungal as well. They both inhibit the growth of fungus. There have been a lot of studies and research done and a lot of kind of empirical research, so you see it happening with people, where they're using flucanosol orally and topically, and they're seeing almost 100% reduction in their yeast issues. However, it can be rather harsh, and you, for a derm you need a dermatologist appointment and or a dermatologist recommendation prescription to get the flucanosol orally and also the cream. Again, it can be quite harsh, so you have to be careful. I've seen quite a few people use Nizerol, so it's an anti-dandruff shampoo, topically on their face with great success, but again, I'm not a dermatologist, I'm not telling you what to put on your face, but they have seen, I have known a lot of people, and again, working with someone one-on-one, -on -one, and if you have any questions, you can always comment below this video, but if you work with someone one-on-one, -on -one, you can use some topical ingredients that can really help Malassezia. From a wash cream perspective, here's some recommendations I make for my clients. Change up your facial wash routine and your shampoo routine and use the following items instead. If you have issues, especially with breakouts and or itchiness here, 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 I would recommend switching over to an anti-dandruff shampoo like Dr. Happy Cappy. This product contains zinc pyrithione and it's used for dermatitis, dandruff, sensitive skin, and it can really help calm down some of the yeast growth. From a face wash perspective, I really like either Vanna Cream or Bioderma Sensibio H2O Micellar Water, and that's it. Most facial creams are gonna have long chain fatty acids in them, and you really need a personalized plan to totally heal malassezia, but if you want to stop it in its tracks right now and not feed it and not encourage it to grow, these are great action steps. One thing that you can use from a healing perspective to try to kill the yeast from a natural healing perspective is tea tree oil. It has been shown in studies to inhibit the growth of certain type of Malassezia species, but you have to be really careful to buy a diluted product and to not use purely concentrated tea tree oil because it'll be really bad for your skin for sure. With any type of essential oil ever, you have to dilute it like crazy, and you have to do a little spot treatment on your arm here. Never take an essential oil and just slop it on. It'll burn you and you will cry. I may have done it once or twice. A miscellaneous action step you can take that's interesting, fun, easy, and uh, free is to get sun exposure, unfiltered, unsunscreened sun exposure for 10 minutes a day. I gotta tell you, my face, this face, does not see the sun. There's a lot of skin cancer in my family. Sun usually causes wrinkles, like I'm not into it. But there have been a few study, studies that sh have shown that UV rays can kill Malassezia yeast. So, and, and also, I would almost imagine that you are 100, I would almost bet 100% that you are vitamin D deficient. I am, we all are. And sitting outside for just 10 minutes a day and getting 10 minutes of unfiltered sun on your skin can be really helpful for you too. So if you have an area, for example, like your stomach, let's say you're having a weird kind of bumpy overgrowth here, you can always go outside, sit there, and then 
hopefully that'll help. And I've had a few clients try that action step and they've seen some good results. So now that you have more details on malassezia folliculitis, do you want to get to the root cause of your acne breakouts in the first place? Click on the link below to take a 30 second 10 question acne personality quiz. And then you'll download three action steps and three recipes that you can try to start to heal your acne naturally. Also, if you want to join a safe, private, and empathetic community of people struggling with their acne just like you, we have a private Facebook group as well where you can meet other people struggling with skin stuff, so find the link below for that too. If you like this video, type yes below so that I can begin to support you on your acne journey. And please feel free to share it as well if you know anyone who has some questions about whether or not they have fungal or bacterial acne. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!